two. What's poppin'? It's your boy, Shaka Antoine, and today's video is going to be about uh, bait fishing versus plugging, and when is the appropriate time to use each. Right? Some fishermen only fish bait, while others just use plugs. Few of us use both. Uh, my motto is give the fish what they want when they want it. So that means I don't just stick to plugs. All right, now today, you know, I am going to be talking with you guys uh, about what bait, plugs, rods, reels, uh, and rigs. All right, so I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but first, I want to ask you guys a question. Uh, do you use bait, plugs only, or both? Uh, I would like for you to tell me why in the comments below. Now me, I fish them both. Uh, it really depends on how the fish are feeding. And that will basically dictate uh, which of those tactics I would deploy. Uh, but primarily in the springtime and the fall are the most optimal times uh, to use bait, uh, preferably. Um, last season, all of my strippers uh, were caught on plugs. Uh, there were a few blues uh, actually fell to bait. And unfortunately, you know, that's just how this season went for me. In the springtime, I'm perfectly torn between should I use bait or should I use plugs? It's a very tough thing for me. So often, um, what I would do is I'll, I'll fish them both at the same time. You know, I'll have my bait on one rod while I'm plugging, and uh, I'll keep an eye on the bait rod, watch for the, that pickup. So, you know, that's just me. I'll, I'll be perfectly torn. I can't really decide on uh, one particular method to use. That happens in the fall for me as well. All right. Now, there is a rule of thumb that I kind of have that uh, I do my best to stick to uh, because the water temperatures play a key role. Uh, in the spring and in the fall but mostly in the spring all right and that rule of thumb is I'll, uh, I'll use bait when the water temperature is below 50 degrees and above 50 degrees uh, I'll use plugs just my own rule of thumb that I kind of uh, do my best to stick to and right, now my First fish of 2015, I was 13 pounds. Uh, first fish of 2016, I was a nice 25 pound fish. Um, both of those fish uh, fell to bait. Again, again, I was. Uh, Starting out, and I did try plugs, but you know, those two years in a row, uh, the fish felt the fish wanted bait. However, in 2017, uh, I caught about the same pound as a fish, it was about a 25 pound fish, except that fish uh, was caught on a metal lip swimmer. imagine or understand or why I'm usually torn between okay which do I start out with if uh, my first fish for the past couple of seasons you know was like a perfect mix not really perfect because 
It's uh, two to bait and one to plugs. No pressure to keep that streak up, right? Know when to make a change when necessary. If you're plugging, when too much bait is in the water with no hookups, then switch to bait. See if they bite. You know, I had a situation once uh, wherein uh, myself and a few other guys we were plugging, um, you know, catching a bunch of schoolies in the fall on uh, bombers and SP minnows. Uh, but that I got really tired of it, and then all of a sudden, uh, some bunker showed up in numbers, mind you. And then I started to notice that, um, you know, periodically uh, they were getting harassed, jumping out of the water. I would see a splash here and there. So I'm like, hmm, while these guys were continuing to catch rats. Like I said, I got frustrated. So I said, you know what? There is too much bait here. I can tell that there might be some quality fish here based upon the splashes. And uh, now that these bunker were now jumping out of water here and there. So I went ahead and made the change. I said, not too much, too much, too much bait in the water. I'm gonna put some blood in the water. Made the change. I moved away from uh, the guys catching rats about maybe 500 feet, just enough for me to uh, keep an eye on them to see what they were catching and what they were doing. So I put a chunk out there and then I caught a really nice fish, uh, about 18 pounds. And uh, I kept that fish and while these guys were on their way home, one by one, they, when they were leaving, they were amazed. They're like, oh, what were we over there doing? I said, uh, hey, put some bait in the water. So one of them did. And unfortunately, he didn't catch. But that just goes to show you, if it's too much bait in the water, um, you know, don't be too stubborn. Make the change. It can make the difference between catching or not. You know, one um, other tip or thing that I like to follow often uh, is if, if I'm if I'm bait fishing with uh, no hits and they start smashing bait on the surface that's an appropriate time to uh, throw top water plugs try to be flexible is uh, what I'm trying to say here if you're plugging uh, bait is there and so are the fish, but they're not really smashing them on top. Either you can uh, match the hatch or start um, snagging and dropping. It's a very effective method. Get yourself a weighted treble hook, uh, cast it out, snag some bunker, keep it there and wait for a fish to hit it. Now, bait uh, I prefer to snag my own bait uh, this way I know it's fresh uh, too many times um, you know bait shops they don't keep their bait in the best condition sometimes they're old or they'll have them resting directly on ice Big no no. Never should you ever uh, rest bunker directly on ice. Put it in a bag, put the bag on ice with the fish in it because they lose their slime. Their slime is what attracts the fish. Some guys like to uh, start their season out uh, fishing blood worms exclusively. Um, I know that to be. A, uh, a Hudson stock bite, so to speak, you know, uh, guys on the upper Hudson, you can't really catch stripers on plugs, so you have to use blood worms up on the Hudson and also in the Delaware area. 
early season. Also, there are some places on the North Shore uh, wherein, yes, early on, bloodworms is the ticket. Uh, I equate that to being the Hudson stock migrating. All right, now, uh, fresh bunker catches fish. Um, I have a little bit of a five minute rule. Uh, if I haven't, if I put a chunk out there and I haven't caught a fish in five minutes, then that's telling me that there's something wrong. And I start going through my checklist, uh, which basically uh, involves, or make, I'll make sure that my bait is fresh. I'll take a look at it if, if I didn't snag it or um, I will um, take a look at my, my rig. I'll make sure that it's uh, it matches the conditions that I'm fishing. And what I mean by that is the, the leader. Um, I use a fish finder rig. That's this right here. All right, the yellow for you for those of that don't know, the yellow slider is, is for braid. The other the green ones, that's for mono. Yeah, before I knew that I was using the green all the time. So for those that don't know. So I use a fish uh, fish finder rig and what that works is your main goes through here, sinkers on here. Now what comes out here for barrel swivel to your hook. Uh, the length of that leader for me dictates uh, the conditions. Uh, what I mean by that is the current. If I got fast currents, my lead is going to be really short. If, uh, if it's not so fast, um, it's going to be long. As long as I can cast it. And I find that that um, that presentation is it goes along with the current, but um, I'll start checking it if if I after that five minute rule I'll start checking it out, trying to figure out okay what what am I doing wrong here, um, that could be causing these fish uh, not to want my offering, especially if I know that the fish are there. Moving right along to plugs. I like to start my season uh, with metal lip swimmers. Because I feel that metal lips does a great job at mimicking the baits these stripers and blues want in the spring. Um, I usually I like to work whichever plugs rather even if it's not metalist but I like to work my plugs really slow in the spring why because water temps are cold so the fish are in a lethargic state and they're, they're not really too active you know they're not going to be chasing anything down with the water temps being so cold so they're usually going for easier meals a uh, slow moving plug is a much easier meal, is what they have energy for. Alright, uh, by the time the summer comes around, I'm almost exclusively plugging until the fall when I might go back to that um, torn state of fishing, uh, torn between plugs and um, bait. All right. Now, fish are much more active uh, when the water temperature heats up. All right, so let's talk about the gear. Uh, rods in the two to six ounce, my favorite. Um, one to four is optimal in the in the springtime. Well, my, not even just in the springtime, but plugging on a hole. I, I typically uh, will be casting a one to five, but uh, more, more, a little more aesthetically, one to four is is best. It's good. It's it's a really good uh, plugging range. So you want to have a rod that's at minimum 
can handle uh, one to four ounce bars. Um, now they do have um, these new sizes and rods that are out now. They're in that uh, nine foot six range or that nine nine two. I've seen some of that are nine two. Uh, those look pretty interesting to me uh, because uh, based upon a lot of the conditions that uh, I fished when I start out, uh, that size rod uh, can come in handy, especially when you're you're waiting in, um, in waist high or in some situations chest high water. You know, a shorter rod uh, is, uh, is, is can be optimal, uh, but I found that until recently, you don't you know, not too many rods are available in that length, uh, able to to cast one to four, one to five ounces. Or in some cases, I believe I can't remember who makes it, but I did see one nine foot six rod that's two to six. Interesting. All right, um, moving right along uh, for bait fishing um, rods that I like to use have uh, ratings of 4 to 8 of course or 4 to 10 um, I plug with my VS250L uh, and I bait fish with my Slammer 3 7500 now I prefer not to bait fish with the the, the, the van stall um, mainly because the drag on the van stalls are pretty tight you know they're pretty stiff even at the loosest setting like if you wind it unwind it all the way and you pull the line is still a lot of tension on it you know fish uh, the last thing I want a fish to do is to feel tension on the line when it picks up the bait uh, of course keeping in mind that I use a fish finder so when I'm when a fish picks it up I don't want him her because you know with the bigger the cows I don't want her to feel the weight uh, the sinker or or me if I'm holding the rod so yeah with that the tension of the van stall it just for me personally I mean I have I've done it before uh, but I prefer a really loose uh, a loose drag setting all right <clears throat> so I don't typically use my 250L to bait fish. For that role, it's that puppy up there. And by the way, my 250L, if you're at, if you notice, it's not on the wall. It's being serviced right now at Saltwater's Tackle. So as soon as Bird is done with it, I'll go pick it up. Moving right along. Uh, leaders, I use 50 pound mono. Um, or 100 pound test, tough line, tough leader. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that is a wire that you can tie. It's soft as braid when there's no tension on it. You can make knots. The only knot that I find that works with it is a uni knot. I'll use that for both uh, while I'm bait fishing or if I'm plugging. Um, some people may feel that, oh yeah, these uh, these stripers are line shy. Um, I've had no issues with catching stripers or blues, plugging or well, actually no plugging. I've not caught a striper with it, but while bait fishing, yes, I have caught a uh, nice size striper with. In fact, that fish of 2016 um, was caught with the tough line tough leader which is the the wire um, so no issues with that with bait fishing with it um, in fact uh, while plugging um, I only use the wire when I am blue fishing in the spring and I've done I've had no issues with it in fact that I'm usually you have to pull me away to, to take it off but typically you know around June when um, the stripers are 
feeling uh, frisky enough to hit plugs. Um, I've been torn with, should I take the wire off? Because, you know, I've, I've done fine with it. Or maybe if I haven't been catching sharpers by June, then I say, okay, maybe it's the, the, the tough line leader. I remember a couple of times I, had to, I took it off and then I started catching sharpers. So I'm still kind of on the fence about if, while plugging, um, do the stripers get line shy with the um, tough line leader? All right. Now for uh, the main line for braid, um, I use 50. You can go as high as 65. I've, I've seen uh, some guys do that. Me, I stick in that 50 pound range. Braid is a must nowadays, you know sensitivity of plugs and strength braid all right for sinkers now um, when I'm on the sand uh, I like to use the pyramid sinkers uh, this is it here this is the standard type this one is a four ounce um, but I have developed a liking for a different type um, this is it right here All right, this is the Hatteras style of sinker this one is a 6 ounce um, I have uh, used the 4 ounce version and um, I'll tell you why I like this style of sinker All right, it's the design these sinkers here hold uh, much better than the other any other type of sinker there is. Why is that? Because of that dome right there. When that goes down in the sand, it creates a suction. Right? So I've got that suction going on. And then you got the pyramid um, set up there. So like say if it lands this way, it still has a point that's down. So these things hold. Uh, you can use um, a much lighter sinker with the Hatteras style of, um, of sinker. Like, uh, for instance, a 4-ounce Hatteras sinker holds just as good as a 6-ounce. The 6-ounce holds just as good as an 8-ounce. Right? And that's why I like to use these. I've, I've done pretty well. And they actually cast way better than any of the other ones. Um, they do cast like this. You know, if you're casting out, you'll watch it. It's just like, like a torpedo. This thing goes. And it pretty much always lands like that All right. so I've developed a special liking for the Hatteras style of sinker um, <clears throat> any condition that I am fishing wherein um, I'm off the sand if I'm not on sand then yes I'll be using the bank sink sinker style All right. Um, Or I'll be using this style here. Um, but this is a two ounce. Now I typically don't use two ounces alone. Uh, sometimes, if I'm fishing a, a spot that doesn't warrant the hatter style of sinker, right, and I don't have the appropriate weight, uh, what I will do is I will just uh, use these to add more weight. I've had situations. <laughs> wherein I needed five ounces. Why did I need the five ounces? Because I started to notice that where I, I wanted my bait to be placed, uh, the current was still moving it. And it was just moving it, moving. It wasn't holding bottom, getting it all the way down until I'm scoped out. So I was like, man, I don't have any five ounces. All I had was four ounces or three. So what I did was I, I took a three ounce um, sinker and I've just added this two ounce to it problem solved and I actually caught the fish uh, that I was trying to catch at the time uh, about 10 pound bluefish one other item uh, in the gear list that uh, we can talk about here are what hooks All right now the, the hooks um, that my father taught me um, 
to use. Um, he taught me how to bait fish. Uh, he liked to use J hooks. So that's what I knew. That's what I. That's what he taught me. And uh, that's these here, the uh, Mustad Seven R. Right. Now he used a lot of uh, three ways. I don't use three ways anymore because I've developed my own little style and my own way or technique I could I should say of bait fishing um, uh, I still use these today but only at a very specific application let's say if I am I'm fishing for stripers and the blues are being pestery you know or if I'm only blue fishing then uh, what I'll do is I'll use that same mustad seven odd hook then I'll go ahead and um, put on a about six inch six inch section of uh, steel leader. This one I believe is uh, thirty pounds or maybe forty pounds, right? I'll put that on, and um, I'll also tie on some mono as my shock leader, right? To get some stretch when I'm setting the hook. Uh, but I find that the J hooks give you a lot more distance uh, so just say if I'm not using uh, this, this steel leader but I am using the J hook you know the distance to me maybe it's not this is a typical um, uh, Gamagatsu octopus hook 9 knot and they're about the same but when you hook the baits I feel like the J hooks give you a little more distance just in case you hook a bluefish and uh, you don't want it to get your leader All right and again yes yeah, so the Gamagatsu's um, octopus hooks is what I use on my fish finders now um, the red doesn't really you know doesn't matter in fact um, my boy Reagan gave this this pack of red to me the color of the hooks not a factor uh, but um, the size of the hooks is, um, I have gone up as far as 10-0, uh, um, but I primarily stick to that 9-0, uh, uh, depending upon how the fish are biting. I notice if they're being a little uh, picky, then I'll go down in size of the hook. I've, I've gone down, in, um, this is a 7-knot, I've even gone down to 5 and have had no issues. Even though uh, sometimes with that size hook you can gut fish a hook because they've practically swallowed the bait. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Alright, and that's those are the hooks that I like to, to, to use. Alright, now that basically concludes uh, what I had to say about fishing, uh, bait fishing or plugging and when were the appropriate times to use them. All right, now, please remember to like, share my videos, and subscribe to my channel, all right? I want you to have a great day, and God bless.